Anyone that's watched my channel has seen that I've been using that Evolution Rage 3 saw for a couple of years now, and I really love that saw, and, you know, it's been a really good saw. So, um, last fall, Evolution contacted me, and they said that they had a newer version of the, um, Rage saw out. It's a redesigned version, and they were wondering if I'd be interested in, you know, giving it a try and testing it out and just seeing how it works out for me. So, I'd say sure, and they, um, actually they sent me out a saw and I'd like to thank Evolution and they sent me out a um, stand for the saw also this time. Last time I bought the stand and it's really an amazing stand. And they also sent me another saw that I'll be doing a review on in a short period of time for another project I have coming up. So this basically is the unpacking of the saw. Uh, it was shipped by FedEx and it came. You can see the box arrived in good condition. Um, little bit of damage to the interior packing of it but it looked like it might have been bashed around a little bit but it really everything was in perfect condition and these are all the parts uh, there's a little instruction diagram there and it's really a super simple saw to put together so I'm just gonna go through here and uh, show you some of the things that have changed over the Rage 3 saw and um, you know show you how to put it together and how this one actually seems to work out so as with the Rage 3, it's got that same little those little indent that you have to have make sure they're recessed. And you just slide this assembly into the bearings. Then I'm going to put this little screw in this little locking knob. It's got a little spring on it to keep it from backing off when you have it loosened. And when you tighten that down, it'll keep the shafts from actually sliding back when you go to slide the saw head in place. So I got that tighten down so that those shafts won't move back because they really do move freely. You can see there's some really nice machine pockets in the saw itself that just kind of go in there and they, um, it's really a perfect fit how everything goes together here and once they go in and they bottom out the little green buttons actually come out and lock the saw head in place here so you know it's really just a super simple assembly here and that's basically it, the main parts are put together there. Now this one actually did come with a really nice long cord. I didn't measure it, but it looks to be probably close to you know, 9, 10 feet. So that's a really nice plus on it. And uh, another good thing is they actually have a wrench included with it that goes right in a little rubber socket in the back there. So you can't lose it. It stays with the saw. That's really a nice feature. And they machined down two different sizes on it, so it fits all the uh, different screw heads on this saw. So that makes it really easy for assembly. The only other thing you need is a uh, Phillips head screwdriver just to loosen up the blade guard. But you can see it's really, really easy to assemble. And this is just a little bracket that goes on the back that keeps the cord from dragging on that uh, bearing block back there you can see and at the same time it's a really nice area to wrap up the cord when you're trying to use this as a portable and carry it around so that just uh, screws right in there very quickly and easily and you just want to make sure that you have enough cord left up front for the tilting of the saw there and nothing to be binding then the this saw actually has these little plastic tables that go on it. Now the Rage had a couple of steel um, bars that were bent up that went off the side. and They also had a little stop feature on them, but I never really used that. And once you put it on the stand, they were kind of, you know, really unusable anyway. So I think this is really a much better feature, uh, especially if you're going to use a stand with it. And there's just two screws that are included there that go into each side and it takes a second to to crank them down and they fit on there and they're really very sturdy and no rocking or anything there and um I think they're you know they're I think they're better than the old bars but uh that's my opinion and I've been looking to make some more room in my shop so this is going to be the perfect solution that's going to allow me to get rid of that big old DeWalt saw that's actually getting pretty worn out now anyway so um, and there you can see on this model they actually have split the fence here too so you can get a higher fence on that uh, inside edge there. And the real neat thing that they did is they reworked the clamp here and you can see it's got a quick adjust feature on it. Plus it also has a 
uh, shape on the bottom that allows you to clamp onto like angles that are face down or onto round uh, tubing and stuff like that. So that really did make a difference, and that's like uh, you know a wonderful upgrade over the the old Rage. So you can see how easy it is to adjust this. And actually, I put that thumb screw on the wrong side. I should have faced it in, but uh, you know I moved it later. And then for locking it in position, there's a, a knob that screws in up front. Um, and you really have to crank this down good to get it to lock. You know, it takes a really good firm thing, and then it locks the table right in place. And this one actually came with a really nice adapter. Well, it comes with a bag like the other one did, but it also came with a really nice adapter for that fits a shop back. Uh, I didn't have really good success though, with collecting the dust, and I'll show you that in a little while, but uh, I think it just needs a little shield around the bottom. Now, this is the only place where you need a different tool. You need a Phillips head screwdriver to loosen that one Phillips head screw to get the guard out of the place there. And then the the arbor nut there, just, you know, it's a opposite hand thread. And same setup like the Rage saw. It's got the outer ring there and then it's got the um, this inner bushing that you put it that way for a 5 8 arbor blade and you turn it this way for the one inch arbor blade set evolution cell there so it will take either blade i think you're best to stick with the evolution blade though because they they fit on the saw and they actually work really nice with it so now i'm just going to put the blade on and uh, one thing I did notice, though, this is a different blade than what the Rage 3 used. Um, this blade has a couple less teeth. That one had 28 teeth, and this one has 24 or so. I did notice a little bit of a difference in one material, and I'll show you that in a little while. But, you know, basically it looks, it looks the same, just a couple less teeth. And then you just have to tighten that down with the included wrench there. And it's a real easy thing. And there's that little button there that locks the, uh, the shaft so that you can tighten it down without having the blade spin. That's a really nice feature on it. And another nice little thing that they did is they put the laser switch right up there where you can turn it on and off. And it's funny how many, these are all the little upgrades that I was wishing that the Rage 3 had. And they seem to have hit them with this saw. So uh, basically it's got a slow start motor like the other one. The one thing I will say is there's a lot of gearbox noise when it first kicks in. The other saw basically had a quiet gearbox. This one you hear it wind up a little bit, but um, you know it runs the same speed. Once it's up to speed, everything smooths right out and goes away. And it's really a smooth, rigid saw, just like the uh, Range 3 was. Now I'm just going to put that guard back in place. Now that blade's on and everything's ready to go. Then I just thought I'd check the setup. Um, and you can see I zeroed the uh, Wixie gauge there on the table. And I'm just going to throw it on the blade there and uh, just check that. And the thing is dead on. I couldn't believe it. My The other one, the Rage 3, I got needed quite a bit of adjustment to get it all tuned and working right. And this one was, uh, you know, that, that 90 degree was right on. And oops, I got that. I shouldn't have uh, put that clamp in there to, to tilt it for a miter cut like that. So just have to get that out of there. Yeah, it's just a simple matter of loosening a thumb screw and pulling it out. Now let's check the 45 degree angle when you tilt it. And when I went in to check that, it actually was off by point, uh, let's see, I think it was point three. Yeah, 135.3. So it's just off a hair. It doesn't, you know, it wasn't much. Um, and that's really a very simple adjustment. There's just a, you have to loosen a little nut there. And then there's a, a little uh, screw there that the out that included wrench fits and just tweak it just a hair at a time because 0.3 degrees isn't really that much so I was able to uh, I just tweaked a little at first and not quite enough I got halfway there and then just a one more little tweak of that and go back and check it and you can see here let's see I'll blow this up a little bit and you can see that's right on at 135 now so that was the only adjustment that it really took so far. So they also sent me a stand to go with it. Um, and here it is. You can see how I'm on, just kind of unpacking it just to show you how well everything was packed. Um, box arrived in good shape. And 
Basically, there's just a couple of mounts for the saw there that I took out first, and then there's some roller assemblies that, uh, they're both a roller assembly and a stop assembly. There they are. And then there's just a couple of, uh, brackets for mounting them and the actual stand itself. Now, I did, uh, purchase one of these stands for that first saw, and I have to tell you, it's a very sturdy, uh, just perfect size stand. It's, it's... My other DeWalt stand has a big stand on it that's just kind of so clumsy you can't move it around and stuff. Where this stand is really, uh, it, it's fairly lightweight. Uh, it's easy to move around and it's very easy to get the saw on and off of. And it really does fold up easy too. They, uh, they did uh, a good job with it. And you can see they put some nice big buttons on there that you just push in in each corner to unfold it. Um, everything was protect, well protected and foam there so basically the finish on it's flawless and it you know it did come in good shape but I do like how these buttons work they lock it really solidly but they're big enough to get your finger on where the old DeWalt stand I got you gotta kinda fight to get your finger in there and hold them down that's basically it and you can see it's it's fairly lightweight but it's really nice and rigid um, but the only thing that you have to do is if you get it on a rocky spot, you have to put a little shim on your leg to keep it from rocking in the one corner. But otherwise, it you know it will hold a, a good deal of weight here. Assembly of it is super easy. It just has a couple of uh, thumb screws that come with it, and there's thumb screw on each side for that pull-out support there. I've just screwed them in all the way, and they do. You know they've got really good contact through there with the bolt and stuff so it takes a while to screw them in then these little cross brackets for mounting the uprights and same thing they uh they use the thumb screws and you can see they did put some nice little steel plates in there to keep them from gouging into the tubing so you don't get uh spots that you know the, they'll stick in later so so now it's just a matter of you just slide that on, tighten the thumb screws, and then slide these in. And you have to do final adjustment of the height once the saw is on there. But you can see how easy it is. And then the next thing they tell you to do is to just check that the brackets for the saw are properly set up so that they go in and they clamp nice. And these actually did. They were set perfectly. And if you have a problem, there's a little screw in there you can adjust to tighten or loosen them a little bit. And another nice thing about this saw is you don't have to take the feet off it like you did the other one. That's when they put holes right through the feet there so you can just uh, bolt it through and all the required hardware actually comes with the stand so you don't have to worry about anything being left out or missing. So you just put a carriage bolt in there and then a, uh, a washer, a lock washer and a uh, wing nut goes on the top. And now I'm just going to drop it in place on the stand there and you can see they really do slide right in there nice and uh, I'm gonna get it kind of centered here then what you have to do is go back and they want you to line that fen the fence location on the saw up with the center of the back tube there so I just kind of loosened up the mounting bolts you can see I slid it back a little bit just to get that fence right where they want it and I'll throw a square on it just to check the square before we start cutting here and you can see that's you know, it's actually this saw was adjusted really nice. It's a dead nut square. And I just wanted to check on that slide there to make sure everything was in line. And um, you can see that sliding fence here really is perfectly in line with the other one too. So everything seems to be really um, well machined on this machine. So the primary thing I'm going to be using this for is in my woodworking shop here now. So I figured I'd start with, you know, the kind of wood I'm going to be cutting mostly with it. So here's just a piece of uh, 11 and 3 quarter inch ash that's the full capacity of the saw's width. It's only a little bit over one inch thick, so, but, uh, and you can see the saw, you can see the laser there, it comes right on when you turn that switch on, and you can see it, yeah, it was set perfectly on this saw also, and, you know, it's really very, very easy to cut, and, um, it did a fairly decent job of cutting that, and... Let's see, I put the square on there, I just want to double check it, and it's actually perfectly square, so, I mean, this is right out of the box setting, so I don't know if I got luck here, they all come this way, but they did a really good job. 
Same with the ash. Um, I'll be cutting some thicker slabs with it. And this thing is pretty amazing how easy it goes through that just like butter. Um, and you can see it did do a decent job cutting it. Then I got some uh, thin gauge, a steel, piece of a steel stud here just to cut. And you want to make sure these are clamped down good. And uh, you can see just kind of the steel itself thin. It kicks a little bit when you first touch it. But, you know, basically you cut it like butter and um, did a real nice job. No real sharp edges or no sparks or anything. And here's an eighth inch wall aluminum tube. And this is where you can really start to see how well that clamp works uh, now that they've redesigned it there. It does have a nice groove in there that you can twist it two different directions. And actually you can get a good grip on items. And it's really, um, it's really required with a saw like this to make sure that you clamp everything down good because you don't want it moving during the cut. And this clamp does a, a much better job than that last one that they had. So there you can see, I mean, as you can, you've probably seen other videos, and this saw will cut anything that they say it will. And there, it did a real nice job on the aluminum. And one of the things I'm going to say is a necessity if you buy one of these is to get a good face shield. Um, this saw actually seems to handle the chips being thrown back at you a lot better than the, uh, the other Rage did. That one would kick a lot more chips, hot chips back at you. This one does, uh kind of kick them out in a little different direction. I think they redesigned that deflector, but there you can see some of them coming that way from the aluminum. And you really need a good face shield to go with this. And there you can see it did a really nice job on that aluminum also. I think one of the main reason that people buy these for is decking materials. And uh, here's a piece of composite decking, and the clamp's a little short for the piece that I have, so I'm just going to Put a piece of wood in there to make it stretch out a little bit to make sure I got the part clamped good. And this is kind of a real high density plastic uh, material. So you can see it actually cuts through that like butter also and does a really good job. And I can't wait. I'm going to be replacing my front deck uh, in the future and I um, plan on using this type of material. So looks like this saw will do a good job. And this is just a small piece of quarter inch cold steel plate that I'm going to cut. And same thing, it uh, cuts right through it, just like butter. See a couple sparks, but absolutely no heat. Um, the piece is ice cold, just as cold as it was when you started when you pick it up. So, you know, it does do that. Now, the one thing that I ran into issue with here was the PVC pipe. I, I cut this piece and you'll see that I did get some internal chipping when you look at it. And that made me take it out and try cutting it on the, the Rage 3 saw out in the garage. And turned out I got no chipping on that. And when I looked at the blade, I found out that there is a different blade on that one. That has a 28 tooth blade that um, does a much better job on the PVC pipe. And there you can see, you can see the chipping on the inside and the outside of it. So that's the one thing that I did have a little bit of problem with there. And um, I think it's got something to do with the uh, the difference in the teeth on the blade or something. I'm not sure, but, you know, it still did cut it good. Um, and then just I decided to grab a piece of acrylic plate that I had just to, to see if it would chip out on that. And actually the, this plate just cut perfectly clean and smooth, so... Just something about that PVC pipe that I had, I guess. There you can see really nice. You can see through that section just about. And this is the test that you always see people do with this saw. So i got to do it too. And this is a piece of 2x4 with a couple of nails driven into the end of it. And this is what you run into, you know, in old construction work and pallet work and stuff like that. And you can see it cuts through there like there's no nails in there anyway it just cut right through it perfectly and a good thing about this saw is for a 10 inch saw it can cut a 2x4 up on end also and it's funny when I look back that's the reason why I originally bought a 12 inch saw over 20 years ago because uh, no 10 inch saw in the market would cut a 4x4 or a 2x4 on end like that so I had to go out and just grab a piece of 4x6 pressure treated that I had outside also just to show you the capacity of this machine. Um, 
Yeah, you can see this is a hard old one that's you know about 10 years old and um, hard as a rock and this thing just cut right through it with like butter it didn't slow down or anything else did a really good job and I think that's pretty amazing for a little you know a little 10 inch saw like this to um, have that kind of power and uh, capacity and here I'm going to show you you can actually uh, you know even cut them you can cut a bigger piece in this but this is just showing you that you can cut four by sixes on a 45 even so now that kind of rules out the need for a 12 inch saw in uh, most applications I think and um, you know, allows you to keep a much lighter weight smaller saw to carry around with you and stuff and there you can see that just uh you know just a perfect cut and the angle was actually exactly on when I checked it and I think you've got the idea by now that this saw will cut anything that they say it will. And, um, you know, I just had to go out and grab some angle iron. I got some inch and a half, eighth inch wall angle iron here just to, to cut, just to, you know, show that it does cut the steel good. Now, with the rage saw, when I um, did that video on that one, I saw some comments from people saying that they only got one cut out of a blade and stuff like that. And when I asked them exactly what did they cut, and they're talking about high carbon or they're talking about stainless steel, and I got to tell you that this rage blade is not meant for that kind of cutting. You have to actually, um, they have a specialized blade that will handle that material. But this blade is more for the material that they recommend, like the aluminum, the wood, the cold rolled steel, and um, plastic. And if you cut them, these blades do last a long time because uh, my saw out in the shop is still on the original blade and still cutting great. And one nice feature of the stand that I use a lot on the other one that I already have is that it's got that, you can raise that roller up there and it's got a nice stop feature on it for when you're repeating cuts. And um, that really does work good and it, uh, you know, it doesn't move or anything. It's a good positive stop with the support. Plus uh, the cord you can see wraps up there, you know, nice and easy if you want to just pick it up and carry it away. And there is a decent handle that they put on these to make them easy to carry. And there you can see that's it. Um, it's really a nice lightweight package. Um, I think it'll do everything that I ask of it. Uh, we'll see over the next couple of years. It'll be in use in my shop here. So you'll be seeing it used in daily use. And, um, you know, we'll see the real results of it over time. But I think it'll be as good as the last one. And here's all the materials I cut with it in. You know, basically, it does cut what they say, and uh, I'm going to recommend, highly recommend one of these face shields. Now, one other nice feature is you see there's a little stop that you can flip over, and um, it's a down stop, so you can actually go back and cut like dados and stuff. So I'm just doing a, a quick cut here of a dado in a piece, and you can see you can step it like this, or you can go coarse, and you can actually um, just chisel the pieces out too, but... It does do a really good job of giving you a nice flat bottom. And the only thing that I didn't do that I should have done is space that block out to get past the radius in the blade. You see a little radius back there. So if I do it again, I'm going to just uh, put it on the saw with a uh, inch and a half spacer like that behind it and cut the grooves. And and this is a shaky old DeWalt monster that this is going to be replacing. And you can see it's got just about the same capacity at about half the size and weight. So all in all, you can see it's a really quick job to put it together. It's only about three, four minutes to put it together. It does cut everything that they say it will cut. And it does a good job at each and every one of the materials. So first impressions are really good. And uh, now it's time for a long-term test in the shop. And uh, time will tell. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe.